Okay, so today we're going to introduce uh, ethical, legal, cultural and environmental impacts when we're talking around computer science. And this is quite a large section that we're going to break down into two parts. Quick starter activity, so you've got two dingbats, so just effectively say what you see. I'll pause, I'll give you a chance to think and then we'll have a quick uh, look at the both. So on the left hand side you've got three words copy. You'll notice that there's an arrow pointing to the copy that is on the right hand side, so the copyright. On the image on the right hand side, you've got the word data which is being protected. So you might have the Data Protection Act or data protection would be fine. So specification context, we're looking at the impacts of digital technology on the wider society with a particular focus to uh, ethical, legal, cultural, environmental and privacy issues. I'll pause on the requirements. You can pause and have a read through. So who does computing technology affect? Now, I think before we jump into any of the issues, we need to consider who these issues will actually impact. And ultimately, you might initially think everyone, and in some respects, that is true. But we need to think about who the key stakeholders are. So when we think about our school, for example, there are the main stakeholders. So we might have the direct stakeholders, such as the students, the staff, staff being teachers, support staff, uh, the office staff, site agents, and so forth. You've got then obviously the school governors. Uh, you've got perhaps even the government, if you're looking at sort of the big directing of uh, education. Then you've got perhaps those that you might not so readily think of. So when you think about the local community, the fact that the school is situated near housing and what happens at the school may well affect the housing. And it might just be something as simple as when the schools have uh, mass events, there's going to be a lot more people coming to the school or even just at the start and at the end of the day. But there are lots of people that are impacted by the operations of the school. And when we think about stakeholders within computing, there's lots and lots of things to consider. If you were to think about large mobile phone manufacturers, we want to think about the impact that they might have on society. We might think about, for example, the direct and key impacts that they have. So it's more about just understanding that concept of stakeholders and all of the people that fall into that category in a given scenario. And this may well be provided for you in an exam question. You may be given information as to who the stakeholders are. So just keep that in mind. So ethical issues then. So ethical issues are generally that consideration for if something is right or wrong. And this might well be a moral decision, whether you think that it's ethically correct for a company to do something or for them to not. And there are a few sort of key points here. So public safety. So ethically, companies should be considering public safety. And there are laws often around these sorts of things, but there are sometimes things which uh, more companies need to consider whether they are morally right to do. Security of data, again, this is a principle where there are pieces of legislation around this as well, but ethically it's right for a company to make sure that the users of that company's data is kept secure as well. So whilst there is laws that regulate it, it's still morally and ethically the right thing to do to make sure that these people who are using their company have their data protected. And accessing to appropriate or inappropriate content. Now, what we mean by this is, is it ethically correct to enable students, for example, at school, to have access to the entirety of the internet? Or is it ethically correct that we actually protect and shield students from being able to access content that may not be appropriate? And again, whilst there is legislation around some of these bits and pieces, it's still a case that there is a moral responsibility for us as teachers and schools to keep people and students safe in our classrooms. Cultural issues. So cultural issues are where we might look at the way society has been impacted and changed as a result of some of the uh, technological advances that have happened. And there are two sort of main things to consider here. So the digital and social divide. Now, the digital divide might well be about the opportunities that everyone has in that some people have much faster Internet connections. Some people don't even have Internet connections. And it's about that inequality in the fact that not everyone has access to the digital devices and resources. And the social divide might well be down to the fact that people may not have the um, finances to buy the latest mobile phone. It might well be that they're under peer pressure from their people um, in their friendship groups to have the next generation of mobile phones. And it might well be that obviously that that social divide where people perhaps aren't in a situation to have that equality um, feel under pressure to, to do so. And equally the nature of employment. And I think more recent events where people are working from home um, the ways in which companies operate now has had a significant impact in the use of technology. More and more commonly now, people are working from home, pandemic aside, 
it's a case that lots and lots of companies can now sort of offer people the opportunity as a result of technological advances for them to actually operate their sort of uh, job from their home sort of office. Environmental issues then. So environmental issues, um, these are sort of issues that arise from the manufacturing and the use of computers. Now, it's important that we understand that that's the manufacturing and production, as well as the ongoing use of these devices. So when we think about e-waste, e-waste is obviously that continual sort of waste that is produced as a result of technology moving on. So as graphics cards become more powerful, the older generations of graphics cards become redundant, they may be ended up getting thrown in the bin or partially being recycled, but quite often is a case that these will have a large number of components which won't have any sort of use anymore. Energy use, energy use is a really important one. And when you think about things like web servers that are switched on continually, running constantly, Regardless of whether someone's using them, there's a necessity for them to be there. Backup servers, email servers, ready to be called upon as and when they needed to be used. It's a really uh, can be a really ineffective or inefficient use of energy, but it is a case that that energy is continually being used. And equally, the resources that are used in production, so the mining of resources and the byproducts of that, so they're waste products. When you're creating the plastics or the materials for for computers, there will be waste products that come as a result of that that will need to be dealt with or disposed of in an appropriate way. And all of these can have an impact on environment. If we think about, obviously, the, the landfill that happens with out-of-date technology, the waste products of the production, and equally the land that's being used to generate energy, um, whether it be if you're running a coal factory or a nuclear power plant, whatever it is that's generating the electricity um, to, to run and actually keep these machines up, up in use. Privacy issues then. So privacy issues are associated with the rights of a person to remain anonymous or simply just having their data protected. And if you think more and more now, whether it be that you're using the internet and your web uh, provider is tracking your use of the computers, if it's simply CCTV recording the movements, not necessarily directly of yourself, but when you're out and about in public, when people drive cars and there are cameras that will pick up on their license plates and will automatically check to make sure that they're insured and so forth. All of these things happen without us necessarily thinking about it. And we're tracked in a number of ways. Most of us probably without even realizing it. If you think about, for example, mobile phones with the GPS coordinates, you know, on most sort of services, you can find out what data has been collected. But it's about that having that privacy being respected. And equally, un unsolicited content creation. And what we mean by that is that you may have people take photos, videos. You might even just be in the background of something that's uh, being recorded. And that content then gets uh, published onto a public sort of forum. So it might well be, for example, your friends are videoing something, you happen to be in the background and you're in that video, but it may well be that it's not something that you particularly wanted to be involved in. And this happens quite frequently. And there are th things to consider with that. There are laws to support that, but it is still privacy. There are still privacy issues that can arise as a result of um, people posting things without, not necessarily your consent, but without your desire as such. And then legal issues. Now, I won't go into legal issues too much because there is a follow up lesson purely based around these concepts, but it's worth introducing and touching these on these at the moment. And the legal issues are where there's sort of government mandated rules or passed as law to prevent and stop things being used in ways that they shouldn't be. So obviously, we spoke earlier about the ethical decisions, that moral decision about whether something's right or wrong. And then the legal implications support that as well. So you'll see that there's a number of different laws. So they've got the Data Protection Act. Computer Misuse Act, Copyright Designs and Patents Act, as well as licensing of software to consider. Um, and these kind of, as I say, are the laws that govern the way in which we do things, but we may still have ethical or moral decisions to make outside of those. 